Hey guys, so I just had a question from a Turbo Tools user asking whether or not the Turbo Tools add on could be used to speed up rendering of VR video, so stereoscopic animation. And the answer is yes, and you can even use the temporal stabilizer to remove animation flicker from each eye, but it needs setting up a little bit differently, and I'll show you why. So, if you're not familiar with VR rendering inside of Blender, basically in the output panel, you've got the stereoscopy option which you can turn on and then in the viewport you'll see you've got the red on the left and the green and the blue on the right so that one camera is going to render twice so you've got if we select it you can see we've got one view for each eye so let's just demonstrate this if we go to the turbo tools we'll just make sure we've got turbo render turned on i'll just set it to the lowest settings and i've got the generate temple stabilization data as well so that we can stabilize the image remove the flicker from the animation afterwards so let's go to the compositor and under the turbo tools options in the compositor i'll just set a cache location so i'll just call this stereo and then we'll do a quick render on the lowest setting so render turbo tools render still image and there we go so let's look at the render layers output so i'll connect the render layers node and you see this is showing that we've got the stereoscopic result, but we've only got one render layers node. Now the way Blender works is it will render the same render layers node twice, and then it will combine those images, separating the colors to give us this stereoscopic result. Now Turbo Tools will only create one cache node for each render layers node. So if you look at the output from this one, it's not stereoscopic because Blender has created that stereoscopic image from both renders after the Turbo Tools cache was created. So in order to get this to work, we need to just do things a little bit differently than we usually would when rendering a non-stereoscopic animation. So let's rename this scene to L. This is gonna be for the left eye. And in the output properties, we'll change this to be, we'll disable basically the right eye. So this is only gonna output the left eye. And now we'll click on this little icon here and actually we'll just delete everything in here. We won't need this anymore. We'll turn off use node. So up here, we'll duplicate the scene and we'll make it a linked copy so that if we make any changes to either of the scenes in the 3D viewport, it will take effect in both scenes. So we'll change this one to R. This is gonna be the right eye in this scene. So in this one, I'll turn off left and I'll turn on the right eye instead. And to render both of these scenes, we're gonna create a new scene and we'll call this one master. So this is the master scene. And in the compositor, I'm gonna turn on use node. This will create as a single render layers node and it's gonna render the scene master. Now I don't want to render the 3D scene in this one. So I'm gonna change this one to be L. So it's gonna render the left scene. And I'll duplicate this render layers node. We'll make this one R. So this one's going to render the right scene. And then we need to combine these together. So to combine them together, Shift A, we'll add a separate color and Shift D, duplicate that, put this one on the left eye, this one on the right eye. And then we'll do Shift A and we're going to do a combined color. And we're going to get the red from the left eye and the green and the blue from the right eye. And just to make it render a little bit quicker for this demonstration, I'm going to change the percentage, the resolution to 30, so it's really fast. And we don't need to turn on Turbo Render in the master scene. This is just set to EV, so it's not even going to use Turbo Render at all. But it will still use Turbo Render in both of the scenes because it is enabled in both of those which are using Cycle. And again, obviously, you need to make sure that both of the scenes have got the same Turbo Render settings so that you don't get different quality renders for each of the eyes. So if you just go to the right one, you can see this has got identical turbo render settings. So we'll go back to the master scene. And if we go into the output properties, you can see I've not got stereoscopy turned on in this one. We don't need it on because it's gonna be using the settings from those individual left and right scenes. And I'll do a turbo tools render still image. And then this master scene will render any scenes that have got a render layers node present. Now, if we Add a viewer node so we can see the result. I'll control shift click on this one. And you can see using those three nodes, we've recreated that stereoscopic image. So let's quickly render the animation. So render 
Turbo Tools Render Animation. And we'll just do 10 frames, so I'll press Escape. And then, so I can publish it, I'll just set this to be 10 frames as well. So I've rendered 10 frames, and we've got the cache now that's been generated for all of those 10 frames. And we can even play those frames back in the backdrop and also in the image editor as well. So if you're rendering at really low samples to get the, the maximum possible speed of your render, it's quite likely you're going to have flicker in the animation. So we're going to get rid of that now. And each of the scenes has got a temporal stabilization option. So if we turn this on, it will stabilize any render layers nodes that are present for this scene, so the master scene. In this case, we don't actually have a render layers node for the master scene, so we can turn that off. But what we will need to do is go to those two individual scenes. So first we go to the left one, I'll turn on remove temporal flicker. And if I've got any complex or fast moving objects, I can also use the temporal intelligence options to make sure I don't get artifacts. And I go to the right scene, I'll do the same. I'll turn on remove temporal flicker. So back into the master scene now, I can choose to publish the animation. Let's just set somewhere for it to output. I'll change it to be an MPEG-4. And I'll call this uh, stabilized. And I'll change the encode into uh, MP4. All right, so firstly, let's publish this animation. We're gonna get, in this case, only one of them is stabilized, and that's because I've got one of them selected. So Turbo Tools comes with a selective temporal stabilization, whereas if you've got any of the cache nodes selected, it will only, it will only stabilize the selected ones. So you can either select both or you can select none. So I'll deselect them both, but I'll make sure I give this a file name, otherwise it won't output. And then we'll publish the animation. And there we go, so it's really fast. And one little trick, if you alt click on a file icon, it will actually open the explorer to that location. And you can see we've got the stabilized footage. And if we play this back, the denoised render has now been stabilized so that that flick has been removed between frames. And that can save you a huge amount of render time because otherwise you've got to use much higher samples to avoid that, which could result in you needing to render up to 40 times longer for similar results. So I hope that's useful. Um, obviously, if you're not using VR rendering, then you don't need to mess about with duplicate scenes. You just click render and you're done. And if you want to play around with the test file, link in the description below. And also, I've just released an incredibly popular course on Udemy, which teaches the fundamentals all the way through to advanced aspects of 3D. It's suitable for both beginners and advanced users or people coming from different 3D software. By the end of the course, you'll have a professional level understanding of various different aspects of 3D, and you'll be able to create virtually anything you want. And in actual fact, by the end of the course, you'll be able to create this scene completely from scratch. Link in the description below. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.